How do you manage to cruise so often? Are you loaded? Do you get freebies? Are you paying? I get asked this often. So it's time to tell all, as along the way, I discover things that will help you cruise more too, or at worst, help you get more cruise for your buck. Welcome aboard, I'm Gary Bembridge. Finding out how to cruise more often began 10 years ago for me. I had chemotherapy for cancer in 2012. I've been in remission since then, several years by the way, more than my oncologist expected. Knowing that the clock may be ticking down made me want to visit the places and try all of the cruise lines much faster than planned. I drew up a list of all the places, itineraries, and cruise lines that I wanted to try. Now, as I looked at my list, I quickly realized I needed two precious commodities, time and money. This is what I did and what I learned along the way. I initially got the time I needed by retiring from my full-time corporate job on a pension, but I soon discovered that while having more time gave me more opportunities to go cruising, I needed to make my money go much further than it was actually able to. That's when it hit me. Being more flexible is actually much more important. Flexibility drives down the cost of cruising, whether you have unlimited time or like my partner who's still working full time with 25 or so working days of vacation. This is what we found out. The more flexible we're willing to be, the cheaper and or the more frequently we could cruise. First of all, I became flexible on cruise line. I stopped being tied to one cruise line, which at the time was Cunard, and I stopped trying to move up their loyalty tiers. I used to value perks like priority embarkation, speciality dining, added Wi-Fi minutes, free laundry, and so on. By being flexible on lines, I now always find a fare that more than compensates for those loyalty perks that you lose. Sometimes the fare actually includes them, or it's still cheaper even after paying for those lost perks. You need to decide how flexible you can be on this. I tend to limit myself as I cruise less on big mega ship resort lines, you know, Norwegian, Royal Caribbean, MSC, and Carnival. And I'm also happy on smaller ships and I'm less of a party animal. Now on those resort lines I mentioned, a balcony cabin is usually around $100 to $200 per person per night, while premium lines like Celebrity, Holland America, Princess, and Virgin can be twice that cost per night. The smaller luxury lines that I like even more, Oceania, Azamara, are double that again, and of course, ultra luxury lines like Seabourn, Silver Sea, seven times more than the resort lines. So you need to decide how flexible you wanna be on lines. Second, flexibility means being willing to cruise off season or at the start and end of the season. It's definitely less busy, it's significantly cheaper than say school vacation and key holiday times. For example, Caribbean cruises in November to early December, January and February are so much less than other times of the year. So if you don't have kids, you already have this flexibility to do that. Thirdly, being flexible on how far out I plan a cruise. This means I'm willing and able to travel when lines reduce prices to fill their ships. This happens usually after 90 to 60 days before a cruise when final balances for bookings are due and the lines know how many cabins they still need to sell. There are two more areas of flexibility that I should probably use more than I do and these will have a really big impact depending on how flexible on these you are. I like to choose my cabin. I'm obsessed with avoiding areas of potential noise like under the pool deck or above the nightclub and things like those with interconnecting doors to the next cabin, stuff like that. If I was more flexible on cabin location, I could book a guaranteed cabin, which usually is cheaper than choosing your own cabin. And a guaranteed cabin means that the cruise line allocates your cabin within whatever grade you've booked inside Ocean View. And they usually do that three to four weeks before the cruise. I also like to cruise in a balcony cabin. Now, if I was much more flexible more often on cruising on an inside, an Ocean View or a balcony cabin, this again would open even more opportunities of course, because when you're chasing fares and routes, it gives you many more options and flexible things to flex. I tend to be most flexible on costly trips, like booking an ocean view to go to Antarctica on Silver Sea, Silver Cloud, for example, or when I want to upgrade to go on a luxury small ship line like Windstar on a Mediterranean cruise, where an ocean view cabin costs the same as a balcony on a much larger line, so you have to flex there. That brings me to the issue of money itself. Here's what I do to make each cruise as inexpensive as it can be without compromising 
that much. From comments on the channel, it's assumed I mostly go on free cruises or get really heavily discounted fares. I do get asked by cruise lines and I have been on press trips in the past, but over the last few years, I have not. I much prefer to cruise when, where, and on who I have on my actual to-do list that I spoke about earlier. Looking back on my last 20 cruises, for example, there was only one where my fare was covered by the cruise line. That was a three-night Virgin Voyages trip out of the UK. The other 19 I booked through my travel agent at the same deals, the same fares available to you if you'd been booking those as well. While over the last few years, the growing income I get from advertising YouTube runs on my videos means I can book many more cruises, I still use the same approach when I had to rely only on my corporate pension to buy cruises. This is what I think can really help you. First, I obsessively track promotions and special sales events. I sign up for email newsletters for every single line that I would consider cruising on. This I found is where promotions first appear. The industry-wide wave season, often at the start of the year, is another great time to look for cruises because all of the lines are running very competitive deals. I also look in weekend newspapers because this is where cruise lines, certainly in the UK, run lots of deals. And I also check in at the homepage of many cruise line sites as often as I can to see if there's any promotions. I find lots of 24-hour, 48-hour sales often pop up there. Now my travel agent also knows to alert me of any deals or upgrade promotions that the lines are running, particularly through agents only, because lines often give agent only offers for them to sell. I try and book every cruise that I can linked to a promotion of some kind. It might be a lower fare, upgrades, you know, you pay for an ocean view, but you get a balcony, or those that bundle in drinks, Wi-Fi, gratuities, extra onboard credit, any kind of promotion. I met a couple on my Viking cruise recently who I found use a similar approach. They don't cruise as much as me because they don't have as much time, but they have some flexibility because they're self-employed. They have a target price per night of around $250 per person, so quite a good budget, but they only want to cruise on premium and small luxury lines, which cost more than that. So what they do is they track promotions exactly as I do, and they only then cruise when they find promotions slipping into their target night range. My promotion-led approach means I need to often book at shorter notice and does work much, much better for the popular cruise regions like the Caribbean and the Mediterranean, and to a lesser degree, I've found Alaska. All of these have many, many lines selling there. They all run very similar itineraries. They all run at the same time because each of those regions has a set season, and so are much more likely to have promotions. But what about the more out of the way and exotic places that are on my list, or those that don't have as many lines sailing there. I plan ahead for those, and I found the best pricing I usually get for those are when the itineraries are first launched. These then, I found, tend to increase in price over time. The lines want us to commit early, often a year to now even two years or more ahead, and they have offers to encourage that. So I found for those itineraries, it's better to do that. So for example, I booked a Japanese cruise way in advance because there's only a few lines selling. The season is very short, kind of February to April usually, and demand for that itinerary is very high. I can already see prices on that itinerary is edging up as they start to sell more cabins and the ship starts to fill up. When I book, I always ask what happens if the price of this cruise changes, because once I book a cruise, I price watch. As the cruise gets closer, and particularly before paying final balance, I check if the fares for my cabin grade have gone down, and if they have, I ask for mine to change. I often do a dummy booking on the cruise line site, for example, but I also set up a fare tracker for my cruise on either cruisewatch.com or cruisecritic.com as they send email alerts when prices change. This has helped me to cruise more often, as I often have had fares reduced, got added onboard credit, or upgrades. The most dramatic one, which I have spoken about before, is an Azamara Mediterranean cruise, where the price of the cruise halved. I got that back. It's enough to book a completely new cruise. I do not spend a lot of money on board, making the total cost of my cruises lower than it probably is for many people. It's easier for me to do that because I don't drink alcohol. I do a lot of self-exploring rather than cruise line excursions. I use hop-on, hop-off buses, port guides, port talks on board, and guidebooks to plan. 
If destinations are far from the port like Rome and Florence, I booked the line on your own transfer which is much less costly. I try to avoid the spa because the spa is crazy expensive and also shopping on board. I do always upgrade though the Wi-Fi because keeping in touch with home is really important to me, particularly if I can do things like FaceTime on the Wi-Fi because I travel solo a lot and I want to stay in touch with home. My weakness is the casino. So every year I allocate a budget of money that I use for that. Though bizarrely, since cruising resumed, that pot is actually ahead because luck so far has been on my side. How long that lasts for, I don't know. So I do build in kind of my special little treat. I often book future cruises on board because there are always at a discounts and the booking itself still gets credited and managed by my travel agent. If you found this helpful and want to know which lines I think are best in each cruise category right now that I recommend you try, watch this video where I start with the most popular cruise category of all. See you over there.